Hi, I wanted to show you my little experiment using my Windows machine here connected to my Nusbio device and my Nusbio device is here connected to my Arduino Uno and I'm going to using the .NET program running here I'm going to actually talk to the chip using the SPI protocol so first let me reintroduce if you don't know what is Nusbio. Nusbio turned your Windows machine a little bit like a Raspberry Pi. It had eight gen general purpose input output, eight GPIO. It also support if you combine two GPIO, a nice square C bus, and if you combine three GPIO, you can define an SPI bus. Therefore, you can talk to multiple I2C chip and up to three SPI device, depending on how you use your IOs. One of the problem with Nusbio is that, like the Raspberry Pi, is that we don't have GPIO that support PWM, pulse width modulation, which is a special feature very useful, and we also do not have any analog to digital converter. So if you want this, you need to add special chip. We do have solution, for example, here I have a board that add eight analog digital converter that can be directly plugged into Nusbio. But I like to try to build a new version of Nusbio that will come with a GPIOs, some PWM, and five or ten analog to digital converter. I worked on a first solution that is here. So here I have another version of Nusbio and I have an analog to digital converter that is the MCP3008 and here I have a GPIO expander that give me an extra A GPIO that's the MCP23008 and that works fine um, so therefore we would have here I have my dedicated I2C bus, which also I use to control the GPIO expander. And the first three wires are my SPI bus, which I use to control my analog to digital converter. So this solution would work. It would give me 10 GPIOs and 8 analog to digital converter. But I would not get any PWM. And one of the problem is I try to, I would like to build a device that has a front panel a little bit than this one. That's just a prototype with a different version, but I would like to do the same. So I had an Eagle CAD board where in the back of this front panel I have that chip and that chip in the back in SOIC. And though the board is done in Eagle, it's been very difficult to have everything fit in the front and in the back and get all the routing. I'm not sure it would work. And in the end, it might be a little bit expensive, especially that chip here is actually about $2 and this chip is about $1 and it will still not give me PWM. Now there's another solution. There would be another solution is to use this. This here is an Arduino Mini. And the advantage of the Mini, well, first it's that it's Mini, it's small, and it does have a few functionality, has enough GPIO, I would get PWM, and this version has seven analog to digital converter. So actually I could control that if I could plug that somehow in my Nusbio device here and I might be able to have this fit in the back of the front panel so for now I'm experimenting but for convenience reason I'm using an Arduino Uno which will be similar to the Mini here but in a bigger format and I wrote a special firmware that is an SPI that turned the Arduino Uno into an SPI slave. And now that I have communication 
from basically .NET program via NewsBio to the Arduino using the SPI protocol, I can use I can build my own API. So I build for now a simple API. We'll see it here. And I have created two API, and here's the first one where I call it 10 times with different values as parameters, and here's the second one. The only difference between, let's say, the API T0 and T1 is that the first one accept one parameters, which is one byte, and return one value, which is one byte. The second API accept one parameter, which is one byte, but return two byte as output. That is actually necessary because when we talk to an analog to digital converter from the Arduino, they are 10 bit. Therefore, I need more than one byte to send the value back. So I need to transfer two byte in return. And what we see as a result of my test is that when I call the first API, I can call I can call it about 110, 120 times per second. And when I call the second one, which return one extra byte, it's a little bit slower. I can call it at the rate of up to 80 times per second. But as you see, it's been working for a while, and at this point I didn't get I don't get any errors, so everything is at least from a communication protocol and API definition, it's working. Now the API doesn't do anything, but later I can start implementing accessing the IO on the Arduino board or the analog to digital converter on the Arduino board. If you are interested in hardware, specifically from Windows and .NET, talking SPI to devices, check out my website, madeintheusb.net.